Hello, welcome to Piano Land TV, your classical music podcast. This is your host, Alexander Bowie, joined by co-host Jeremy Al. Today, we're going to be talking about why fitness is important to musicians. If you're watching on YouTube, you can well, probably see both of us in kind of our fitness clothes because it doesn't make sense to go into fitness and wear regular clothes and workouts or exercise or swim. Anyway, uh, this is an important topic that some people may say, oh, I don't have time for it. Uh, I have to get um, like a plan or I don't know where to start. And since both of us are into fitness and we, we really are into fitness in drastic different ways. Jeremy and I do not work out the same way or eat the same way. And um, we're giving you two possible choices or, and there's even more for you to find out. So let's get into the fun part. Jeremy out here um, loves playing tennis and he also loves, how should I say, bodybuilding in a way that he wants to get big. And uh, I always tell him, hey, don't get too big or else you can't play violin anymore. So I'll give you the stage, Jeremy, and a uh, give us why you went to fitness and why you chose these types of activities and how it helps you to become a better musician. You know, I, I started playing tennis when I was really young. I also did swimming too. And um, of course, first you just do it just to learn, you know, you take your lessons and you play every week. And then, and then, uh, I mean, eventually you start to watch the pro play, you know, like um, they got the Wimbledon going on right now too. But let's say you watch Federer or Nada play on the TV and you know, when you watch those pros play, you get the feeling, oh, it gives you the motivation, you know? I want to play. And I guess, like, uh, it's similar to music, you know, when you play your instrument. Let's say I play the violin, right? And uh, I see, let's say, a uh, Paramount play, right? And it sounds so good. You, I want to play, you know? I want to I wanna play because... Uh, you know, you get the motivate. And um, I just showed to you this uh, yesterday. We were working on the, <laughs> the Beethoven the strings and that. I was like, oh, I really love these two Ashkenazi and Perlman playing. And why? And we're probably going to talk about this later and not in this episode. But why is it something that we like and the inspiration that we get from it? Well, I guess it's because the, the level is different. You know, um, well, I guess uh, when you're young too, you just started or you're in the media level, even let's say in tennis too. I um, mean, you can't play like Nadal or Federer, they're the top in the world, but you see them and you see how they do things. Oh, I want to try that. I want to try that. And then it's the same as the music too, you know, the Kroman or Gyusha Han, Hilary Han, they sound so good, you know. And, oh, I want to play so I could get closer, maybe a little bit to them. And it's same as the bodybuilding, too, you know. Um, well, let's say uh, the Olympia, you watch the Mr. Olympia competition. And they got the open class for uh, above 212 pounds. And they got the people until 212 pounds. And, and, I mean, they got other class, too. But let's say who won the Olympia last year, the big Rami. He's all like 300 pounds of lean muscle, you know? And of course I can't be like Big Rami, no matter how hard he, I try because he has the genetic, he has the talent, he works so hard, you know? But seeing Big Rami train or anyone else, you, uh, you see them train and you wanna see how close you can get to, you know what I mean? And then, there's another kind of motivation too. It's like I was saying earlier before we started this podcast, but it's your own motivation. And um, I practice today, you know, uh, like maybe I practice maybe 25 minutes straight because yesterday I was uh, 
inspired by myself, you know? And well, so we played the Spring Sonata, just exposition last, uh, last week at the church and we took a video, right? And I don't have that video, you have the video. And you sent me the video and the last night I watched that little bit and you know, I listened to it and I feel, oh, it sounds so good. I wanna play, you know? And then so I decided to play today, you know? And then it's the same as the, uh, let's say tennis to bodybuilding to you. Even if you watch the pro, but you don't see yourself improve, you get uh, discouraged, you know? And uh, so let's say, uh, tennis uh, you keep missing or something and then you get discouraged or even if you no matter how you get inspired by the pro and let's say the bodybuilding to you watch uh, the people in the olympia uh, them uh, pose you know or train and they look so uh, great but uh, you don't see any improvement in yourself you get discouraged but but if you train, maybe like you train many months, year, and you look at yourself, oh, I got this much bigger, or maybe I got a little bit leaner in this part, or this part is uh, getting better. Then you get inspired by yourself, you know, because you see yourself get better and you want to, you know, uh, do more to get your goal. That's fantastic. And, uh, you know, motivation within fitness, that really goes well with your performance. Because as, as, as Jeremy had mentioned, you know, watching other professionals do it, and then you look at yourself and say, how am I ever going to get there? You always have to start and look at yourself and see how you are at the moment. Reflect. And that's why recording yourself during practice sessions or performances and you looking back and many people actually tell me, oh, I don't want to look back. And I say, why? And they say, oh, I play bad. And some people have the worst criticism of themselves. They say, nah, I went over it. I don't want to look at myself. But how will you improve? How will you know what is the best thing or the worst thing you did in that recording? So it's always good to look back for best for the good and also for the bad and that you'll always be into improvement. So it might surprise that Jeremy um, mentions that, you know, he says working a full-time IT and he's also teaching violin and practicing is not probably on his top of the list. Um, and I'm very happy to hear that uh, you listening to yourself and that motivates you to even practice even more. And it's out of the blue, right? I always said you had potential, you have talent, go practice more. And I haven't found a way until I sent that video unexpectedly and you're able to do it. And I'm very happy for you. And I can't wait to, uh, to get this, um, you know, spring sonata in shape. Um, another thing, you know, self-motivation, both for sports, fitness, and music. Fitness also takes time, either in your tennis or bodybuilding, running, any type of workout, it all takes time. It's the same thing as practice. If you don't keep at it, you will eventually fall down. And if you don't do it for a week, you'll feel a difference. Um, it's the same thing with eating. You know, if you're really piling yourself with fast food every single day, as Jeremy mentioned that he eats uh, McDonald's uh, so very often and he didn't feel sick, his body got used to it. Um, personally, I don't recommend you eating McDonald's <laughs> so often. It's not good for your body. And because Jeremy's body got used to it, all the bad, um, bad ingredients got in his body and they got used to it. Um, it's not good for fitness. It's also not good for your well-being. And if you want uh, diabetes and high blood pressure, uh, so be it. <laughs> um, but, you know, working out it takes time. Fitness uh, it takes time. So does practice. Practice, sometimes you don't feel your best. Sometimes you feel unmotivated and you want to give up. And a fitness on another level is the same exact thing. And that's why two of them coincide with one another and help and benefit each other. You know, uh, many people think uh, playing your instrument is just moving your fingers. Not really much. They don't, they don't really imagine how much hard work goes into it. 
how much mental energy and how much physical energy. Jeremy, how, how uh, many calories do you think if you were to practice violin for an hour? Well, I don't know, you know, it depends what piece you play, you know. If you play something, uh, you move a lot, you <laughs> burn calorie or you know, piece that um, I like to play a lot these days, those uh, short pieces, then you don't burn much calorie. <laughs> but, but I mean, I think it's, uh, it's good. I think it's a good way to take a break, you know, from, especially musicians, they're inside all the time. They're just playing, practicing, and they don't really move that. I mean, they move when they play, but they don't really uh, get up, you know? And sometimes it's a good way to refresh, you know? If you go uh, to some sport or you go to gym, and uh, I guess it's very similar, the way the sport or works and the music works. So I think uh, music teaches me how to, um, how to work hard at something, you know? And so did the sports. And uh, so I guess it's good to have different things to do. And I think also uh, that kind of doing other activity, it's good for your, uh, your music too. Because if you hear someone play who only practice their whole life, you know? And you, I mean, of course, maybe the technique's great, maybe even music is great, but uh, they don't have uh, something, the experience that someone else has maybe did other things, you know? And like, uh, like Joshua Bell, he did many different activities. And, um, you know, they'll kind of, it shows in your uh, playing, even if you don't notice, you know? Yeah, those are those are great, great points to make. And you know, some some people are wondering, how do I get into fitness? And you just start doing it. I mean, of course, uh, you know, if you want to start something and you feel you're not ready for it or you want to check with your doctor, highly recommend it. Don't do something that you don't think you're capable of. But if you're not disabled and your legs are working fine, take a walk. Everyone does it, unless you're in a wheelchair. But if you're able to walk around your house and get food from the fridge and go back to your laptop, why don't you try to walk around your block? And uh, if you're saying, oh, it's too hot outside, summer, then do it early in the morning or uh, later in the evening when the sun's down. That is your first step into really fitness, walking. And if you've been doing that since you were born, besides crawling on the floor like a baby, that is the most easiest way to get into fitness and have a schedule for yourself, right? Uh, when I first started my fitness journey, I wanted to lose weight. I was a chubby kid and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't feel good about my body. I didn't feel good about my self-image. And so I wanted to change that. If you have something to change or you have something to improve in your everyday life, then fitness is great. And also it helps you feel better for yourself. It's uh, you're getting rid of the bad uh, toxins in your body, the bad stuff you ate from your food. I mean, when we go to the bathroom, your body disposes of the bad stuff, but it, it can't dispose everything. And that's why fitness is working, why you sweat. And you also lose good stuff when you sweat. You don't always um, just lose bad stuff. And that's why eating is also important, the right way to eat. And if you don't know what the right way to eat, use Google, Google is your friend, what is healthy eating? And, and there's also YouTube and there's every type of source in this generation. If you're always unsure of what to do in fitness, you can always um, search on the internet. But that's the first step, walking and eating right, eating healthy. Try to avoid um, you know, high calorie foods in terms of uh, fat and grease. Um, look at your nutrition label when you're uh, shopping, grocery shopping. Um, try to avoid like trans fat and 
high sodium um, and cholesterol. Those are really big factors. Even at the, our age right now, Jeremy and we and I are in our mid to late twenties. If you are at around our age, or a little bit older, or even younger, it's always great to start early. You don't want to be in your fifties and then start not realizing, oh no, I have high blood pressure, I have cholesterol, diabetes. <laughs> All these problems are actually um, not good at good for you at that age because your body has already slowed down. So do it when you're young and um, you'll be in a better start. You can always ask us questions as well. Um, uh, Jeremy, uh, for those who are wondering, hey, I'm a musician, can I work out and be a bodybuilder? Well, I mean, anything, as long as you get the motivation, you know, even playing violin is motivation, playing piano is motivation, you know, like, even if you're maybe not into the music, maybe let's say, oh, if you're into girl or something like that, if you see a really pretty violin player or a really pretty piano player, you might be like, oh, I want to play too, you know? And uh, same thing with the uh, uh, training or playing sport, you know? If you see, uh, if you're not in, if you're too lazy to go to gym, right? But maybe you watch the next Mr. Olympia competition and see all this, uh, these huge guys with the really high quality muscle, you know? And you're like, oh, maybe I want to try to train gym too. And I feel me, uh, I think I mentioned before, maybe in one of the earlier podcasts, uh, you know, the Asian people, you know, it's harder for them to build the muscle. But uh, there was a one a Japanese bodybuilder, uh, Hidetara Yamagishi. He lives in uh, Las Vegas, right? Now. He's been in US for 15 years. He went to one of the top university in Japan and he actually became a bodybuilder and uh he moved to las vegas and um well and then he's opening up a gym right now you know yeah he he's opening up a cafe where they make uh shakes you know and then they uh he's opening up a gym and he even uh he made a, a competition too in japan uh where uh they have opportunity for uh japanese bodybuilders to get pro card you know and become a IFBB pro, you know? So is, even if you, you don't, and then maybe like if you're small too, you know, um, like let's say you're short, you, you can't play tennis. Well, maybe you look at the uh, people like uh, Diego Schwarzman, you know, he's really, he's, he's not that tall, I mean, compared to the other players, but he's doing really well and then, you know, look at him play and you feel like, oh, maybe I can do it too, you know? And of course, of course, that's, uh, you have to see the reality too, you know? They have a different kind of talent that you're not going to have, but at least, you know, it's possible, you know? Um, one thing I wanted to touch in addition to what you said about um, bodybuilding. Yes. Does bodybuilding affect the way you play violin? Well, I mean, I guess if, if you want, if you are really focused on uh, violin, you want to win the Queen Elizabeth competition, maybe it's not the greatest idea, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I guess for me, you know, I'm not going to, I mean, I, it's not my goal, you know? And so I guess, uh, I mean, and then, you know, you can still be a decent player. Maybe uh, if you want to be the top, maybe not. But uh, if you want to become a you know, the decent player, then it's, I think it's fine, you know. It depends what your goal is, you know. If you want to be the number one violin player in the world, maybe you shouldn't do bodybuilding. <laughs> but, yeah, but I mean, if you're fine with a uh, world number 200, then it's fine. Maybe. <laughs> well, number 200, that's, uh, that's actually not bad, you know? There's just, uh, billions of people in this world being 200. So, hey, Jeremy just gave you a secret. You could still be a bodybuilder and be around number 200 in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, bodybuilding actually is actually pretty healthy for you if you do it right and you balance it and you can still strive for that number one position. However, um, I'm part of like the opposite of Jeremy. Jeremy loves to um, see how heavy he lifts and, um, you know, beat his personal record, which is great. That's his motivation in working out and he strives to be better. For me, I like to stay with general like 15s and 20s and just stay consistent, right? When I see I can be consistent and if things get easier, then I push it a little bit by five pounds, but no more than that. But if I start to feel weaker, there's something wrong with my training. So the same way in your own practicing, you feel the same way. If something's not working out, uh, you got to change your methods. If, um, and also there's in fitness, there's called a um, plateau. Once you hit that plateau, you don't really see results anymore. And the same thing goes into your practicing. You see how fitness and practicing really go hand in hand. They teach you a lesson. And as Jeremy mentioned, when you do fitness, you can move a lot more than you can play an instrument. Of course, you'll move a lot in your instrument playing, but you're not able to cover much ground. You're not able to get a breath of fresh air unless unless you're a portable instrument, then you can go play your instrument else. However, uh, it's a little different um, type of feeling, you know? And when you wear fitness clothes, that's one thing to get yourself motivated. Wear fitness clothes because they're really important to motivate you. You're not gonna, um, you're not gonna wear fitness clothes and play your violin if you're gonna perform on stage. That's just wrong. <laughs> there's a uh, appropriate attire for everything you do so don't go walk out and just wear your pjs or wear your regular clothes try to have you know like a fitness shirt um a fitness shorts and uh you know athletic shoes you'll feel a difference right there and you'll want to you'll really want to do your fitness and get your fitness journey started um so those are like tips um if you want to do start your fitness journey or continue your fitness journey or even be inspired to improve your fitness journey. All of this will help you become a better musician um, one way or another. And I believe fitness, because you do fitness, it will help you live longer if you also eat the right foods. So this has been a wonderful episode talking about fitness because this is something we both love. Uh, Jeremy, I love talking about it. And uh, even though we're two different athletes and also two different musicians, they say opposites attract, and not in a romantic way, but in a very close friendship, almost like brothers. And if you're able to do something risky or, or more of a cliche, well, risque, but you succeed in doing it, you never know until you try, right? If you fail, try again. You fail again, try again. If you fail, uh, maybe it's time to try something else different. Don't be afraid. Get into fitness. You'll be so glad you did. And you'll become a better musician. That's all for today. Um, why it's important to have fitness in your life as a musician. This is Piano Lin TV, your classical music podcast. Your host, Alexander Bowie, and co-host, Jeremy Al. Thanks for listening, watching on YouTube. Like and subscribe. And uh, following our podcast platforms, wherever you listen to Apple, Google, or Spotify. We're here every Tuesday. We'll see you then. Uh, get walking. If you're anywhere in the world and you see the time is right, get walking. Get running. Do some fitness. Your body will thank you. Take care, everybody.